coming up on Mayhem. We're looking forward to the NXT special. Looking back at Bound for Glory? And what if TNA became an off-TV independent professional wrestling organization? All that and more Mayhem Show. Parental discretion is advised. Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. Hey guys, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show, episode 490. Holy shit. Uh, what? What? That's so many. That's a lot. That's a hand. That- <laughs> <laughs> I'm Mike Slurk at Slurkertron on the Twitter live from the Mayhem Studios in wonderful Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, ready to talk to the, 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 the not the technology, this is the pro wrestling show. Uh, talk about some pro wrestling, talk about some WWE, some NXT, some TNA. We'll find out very soon. Uh, with me on the panel, he's joining us from San Antonio, Texas. He is the voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling down there. You can catch their stuff on Smartmark Video of all places. He's Eamon Payton at eamon 2 please on the Twitter. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am excited to be back on the Wrestling Mayhem show. There's no reason why I'm smiling so much right now. Nothing happened before we hit the record button. <laughs> Just hold it in, man. Just hold it in. Don't let the movement go. Uh, also with us from Johnstown, PA, is Bobby of J-Town. He's got the magazines. I got magazines. And um, I'm sorry, I, my short uh, career in MMA ended this weekend uh, on a brown note. Oh, oh Bobby. <laughs> Bobby, Bobby, no. And also I with us. Myself, okay. Also with us from the Lunchbox compound is DJ Lunchbox. What? He's got a guest with him. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. She's just uh, looking at the screen. Uh, good morning, everybody. Good morning. DJ Lunchbox here. Uh, quick update. My nano implants are coming along swimmingly. Uh, my eyes can now change color at will, and my colon has never been stronger. Mine isn't. <laughs> there you go. Uh, <laughs> wow. Uh, tech note, LB, I think you want to double check what mic is on. I, I think you might be on a room mic or something over there. I, I, oh, I, no. I hold on. Let's fix this. Let's fix it. That's live. fine. Go ahead and do the thing. Go ahead and do the thing. That's fine. And there we go. <laughs> and I, I like you're broadcasting in a cave. <laughs> if you can turn it up a little bit on your end, good sir. Uh, other than that, I think we're ready to go because this is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. I, this I reformatted my entire computer and all the settings are to default. Yeah, so yeah. Like yeah. If you can turn it you... from the bottom of a sewer. Yeah, you're you're low. If you can bring up a, a volume on your mic in the settings in your uh, Windows uh, Task Manager or whatever the technical thing you call it anymore, I don't know. I gotta tell you, I don't think I can. Your Windows, Kevin. <laughs> all right, we'll see if we can fix it on this end. But anyways, this is your Wrestling Mayhem show. We're going to talk about all kinds of wrestling sort of things, and uh, we're going to discuss uh, 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 TNA, etc. Uh, but you can get on the discussion and subscribe to us, WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Uh, check us out on the social medias, including the Twitters at Mayhem Show. And so many other places, the Facebook. We have a great Facebook group for Wrestling Mayhem Show, and so much more. Right, LB? Absolutely right. All right, that didn't do too much on your volume. Uh, we'll I'm keep working, working on, on that. You can also hit us up at four one two two zero six WMS zero or good times. Good times. Good times. Good times at wrestlingmayhemshow.com. I check out our friends. That yeah, it's good. Basicsickness.com for the music uh, that, that introduces you and exits you from uh, this and the Indie Mayhem Show. Please go check that out. And thank you so much to our Patreon supporters. Hello, Patreon supporters, uh, including the Diggity. Ooh. That was a terrible ambulance impression <laughs> yes it was uh but and also our friend from the wrestling revolution.com he's also joining us in the chat room tonight he is the heel garza he is uh zero 2k he's a man of many names and that's all i have for him and also our friend ed burke also a patreon supporter if you go over there we actually have something new for you guys Ooh. 
hopefully to entice you to support the show, upgrade, whatever the case may be. Uh, if you hit up, we have a new uh, line here, a $5 uh, mark here for an executive producer. Uh, what we're going to do is... After uh, four consecutive weeks of you being at the $5 executive producer level, I'm going to send you business cards mm-hmm. with your name on them, hmm. whatever you want to say. We'll figure that all the details out there. And I'm going to send you a, uh, a small batch of business cards that say your name here, executive producer, wrestlingmayhemshow.com. And that's something you can put on your LinkedIn profile. You're somebody that supports the show. We appreciate it. You are... An executive producer. That's what an executive producer does. By my limited uh, definition and my knowledge of the movie industry, they, they're they usually the money guys. They're usually the guy writing the check or finding the people that can write the checks. And that's what you guys are doing exactly right there. So we want to give a little bit of something extra back to you guys. And if you haven't yet, check out the Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Plenty of levels there for you guys to check out. But even if you give an opinion a month, if you can't pay, even just sharing the show, uh, uh, sharing the link, subscribe to iTunes. Even if you don't even use iTunes, it helps. That is the thing that helps uh, get the show out there or, or just sharing it or, or leaving a comment. I want I want I want you guys I think you guys could have some fun comments on there uh and 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 if you can leave one again um we'll figure out something special to send you. I need to come up with a prize before I say we're going to send you something. Uh actually we have some stuff around here. We have a prize pack. I know there's some Smackdown some some uh, uh Smackdown stuff, some posters that uh, I know Mad Mike left us a while ago. We never went through the prize drawer. Um actually actually if I get one more than 5 comments this week on the uh on the itunes and uh i want to pick a winner from those uh i'll send you out this world-class championship wrestling uh dvd sealed Why go check it out sadness <laughs> uh so your life will feel better it's all about context bobby i, I watched i watched the, the diary of anne frank uh thursday and i feel real good about my life right now okay uh also speaking of i mean and, and in, in similar context uh poor Eamon and mike watch bound for glory sunday night but we'll get to that in the second segment uh but first we want to talk about nxt there's hey there's something going on this week well two sides first we got the uh nw uh, nwa uh, Jeez. What NXT TakeOver Respect special happening Wednesday night, but of course there was also the 24-7 special last night, uh, mm-hmm. which which kind of led to, like, showed the lead up to TakeOver Brooklyn, which was just a huge, huge event for all of them and those involved. There's even a Logan Shulo sighting, by the way, uh, the Shulo. drifter out there, so um, the, the friend drifter. of the show. But um, I, I think a, a couple of you guys saw the the that, and you've been watching NXT leading up to this. Uh, it's a, it feels like such a special time in in pro wrestling that we have this. Um, what what did you guys think of that twenty four seven special? I loved it. Uh, I thought it was a really great in depth look at everything that kind of went went into the whole thing. Um, yeah, it was it was really fun. I, I WWE has done a really good job of you know. The behind the scenes, like open the curtain stuff that they've done, I think has been really good lately. Um, especially like all the network specials and stuff like that. It really gives a good look inside what actually kind of goes on. Right, right. What about uh, Bobby? You watched most of it, right? I watched some of it. I fell asleep. I fell asleep during Raw as well. I think it was just <laughs> I was really tired last night. Um, but still- what I did see of it, I really liked it. And mm-hmm. I was trying to fight sleep to stay awake, but it just didn't work. Mm-hmm. I, I think. Go ahead. Need insight, but on, on some of the stuff that went on that weekend. Yeah, it's really funny. I actually was having a conversation with somebody um, uh, last week, and they were like, "Man, why WWE? Why don't they have like an NFL fuel?" films kind of thing going on i was like well actually they kind of do that's exactly what this 24 7 is uh breaking there's too. a breaking ground coming up thank you bobby uh they have all these interview specials and everything i mean it really is they're taking a lot of cues from an espn to be quite honest and, and all those mm-hmm. which makes sense since hey they're right up the road from the espn so i think maybe there's a couple uh, uh guys that they brought over that may be under the fold there and helping them do the programming and do these kinds of things. Right. Uh, so no, I think it, it was a, a tremendous thing and, and kind of showing that and showing even um, the guys leaving, you know, it was supposed to be, I was, this, I think supposed to be the last show for Sasha Banks mm-hmm. from the sounds yeah. of it. Well, of course, they, of course they went on to do the, 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 the Iron Man tournament, Jeez, Iron Man match that we're going to see here Wednesday night as of this recording. Uh, you may have seen it by now. Um, but but again, kind of looking forward to this. 
I apologize if you see this after Wednesday, because obviously you're going to know everything that's happened. Just skip to the next segment where we talk about Sagnus and TNA. But um, but but what are you guys feeling going into this? This is we don't have a title match. This is the first time where we haven't had the NXT Championship defended, and it's led by the main event of of, of the women in action, um, and especially kind of on the heels of having I thought two really decent even women's matches on Raw. Yeah, I think um, they really are building this up as a big deal, and I think, and for good reason. Um, I don't think I'm really missing anything by not having a NXT title match. You know, Finn Balor mm-hmm. still featured on the show; he's in the tag tournament. Um, I, I think it's a fun NXT. It feels, it still feels as compelling and interesting, and and something I'm really looking forward to. Even though you know they've had a little less time than they normally have to build it, and you know the matches aren't as like big like feud heavy matches but i i still think it's great i think uh they're gonna set something up in the for the title mm-hmm. um i think something's gonna come out of this tournament either with some of joe or somebody coming back i don't know i just have that feeling but it's it's really cool to see them actually focus on the divas uh the the divas revolution on raw is is not going as planned but the divas revolution in nxt is mm-hmm. so it's good and it's going to feed in, and hopefully they're they're taking a little better advantage on Raw, it seems. Mm-hmm. Um, so hopefully that keeps up. I don't know. Again, I think it's just harder for them to book on that side. Uh, so um, I, I don't know. It, it's interesting. Uh, we're also kind of leading to the end of this Dusty Rhodes Tag Tournament. Uh, mm-hmm. I believe we have uh, Baylor, Baylor and Samoa Joe along with... There's no Gable real... and Jordan, my personal favorites. Mm-hmm. I, think, I hope they win. Mm-hmm. They're so unbelievably good. You've not viewed NXT. <laughs> Rhino, Rhino and Dallas, and of course uh, uh, Dawson and Wilder. Uh, Rhino and Corbin. I'm Rhino sorry. What I say? Oh right, yeah, right. Rhino and Corbin. Um, really, I, I, I think, I think you've missed opportunities if you're not elevating a new tag team. Uh, so I'm talking about you know somebody established like even da- Dawson and Wilder. If Dawson and Wilder mm-hmm. becomes like the shocking uh, winner of this tournament, nobody saw it coming. I, I think they beat the Vaude villains. They beat the Vaude villains. I think that's a really good sign about doing that. But I would more like to see Gabriel and Jordan because I feel like they're definitely going to be able. I mean that's a nice bragging point, right? Mm-hmm. So they're growing in popularity. They're working well as a team. I mean. Jordan especially has broken out, I think, as well as as Chad Gable. Like they're there, they don't. It doesn't feel like one's weaker than the other. Um, I, I I'm really impressed with them, and and I really do hope they take it. If not, at least make it to the finals. You know, they have a cool finisher too. They do have a cool finisher. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I know. I, I I love everything about them, and like you said, I think if they can use this to elevate a tag team, that's that's the way to go. Certainly. Uh, what what else are you guys looking for? We got Asuka. That doesn't yes. look right. Is that how we're saying it? No, yes. it's not. <laughs> okay. Okay. Japanese pronunciation. WWE is doing one thing right because Japanese pronunciation. You never pronounce pronounce the U. Okay, mm. but it's Asuka. Asuka. Yeah, Asuka. She's Asuka. I can't wait until she needs Dana Brooke in the eye and gives her a little bit of bone fracture or whatever. Um, <laughs> okay. So Dana but no. <laughs> but that's happening. Yes. Uh, so, so uh, obviously, Eamon, uh, you've seen more of Asuka or the former... Um, I, I what? No. I, <laughs> Eamon, you've seen... You've seen more of another girl that's not Lithuanian uh, that we're actually talking about right now. Um, <laughs> what are we going to expect with her against Dana Brooke, do you think? I mean, I again, I think a lot of people, we've seen some promos. They actually showed her in action a little bit. But again, mm-hmm. like, what? what's the big deal with this girl? Um, you say what to expect. I really don't know what we're going to expect from this. Um, I'm, I'm very intrigued to see how she'll work in a WWE style. Uh, because her style in Japan is so very hard hitting, um, I'm, I'm sure she can adapt. Um, this is going to be, in my opinion, a very big test for Dana Brooke mm-hmm. to work with somebody of that caliber and you know in that high profile of a role. Um, it'll definitely be interesting to see. I, I, I personally have said before I think she that Dana is improving. Um, I, I think that it'll be interesting to see how that one goes. I. 
that that's that along with the uh, main event Iron Man match, like that's the match I'm kind of the most interested in because I just don't know what's going to happen. I realize Dana Brooke is supposed to be in the main. What? It's what? what? <laughs> I realized this week that Dana Brooke is supposed to be annoying. I, was like, no, I thought you said yeah. supposed to be in the ring. I was like, no, 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 what? supposed she to be said... annoying. I see. I guess. Ask the hyena. Gotcha. Yes, the hyena. As she was... <laughs> but yeah. um, uh, question. oh, good. No, go ahead, Bobby. Uh, do you think that Oksana's – or not Oksana, like, god damn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Asuka Oksana. is going to bring out the scary makeup, or do you think she'll just be herself? Or do you think I, that, that's too know. close I, to Finn's gimmick? That's my thing. I think it may be too close to what Balor's doing. I think she maybe she'll have, like, little makeup or something, but, like, I don't think she'll go full face paint. Um, scary. But, hey, you never know. Scary clown. Yes. Well, I, I think Garza is correcting us because I think I said this one wrong. I said Dash and Dawson and Kana. So uh, thank you. Thank you for your corrections in the yes. chat room. But you can correct us yourself live at WrestlingMamshow.com at 9 p.m. Eastern time I every Tuesday. Oksana. So, or Oksana. <laughs> Just, there's no correcting that. Uh, okay. I'm, uh, I'm very much looking forward to this uh, this pay-per-view because this is the, my first stop on the, uh, the road to invigoration. Oh, reinvigoration. Yes. <laughs> do, do you want to? My, uh, do you do you want to talk about it here? Or do you want to talk about that after the uh, big question? Uh, well, yeah. Let's let's hold off uh, uh, until after the big question. I'm curious if uh, if we got any answers, what their recommendations were. But uh, I'm I'm putting together a plan, and it includes Ooh. this show. Oh no! Oh, oh no! Um. Excellent, excellent. So uh, let us know your thoughts on uh, NXT, and of course, you know we'll be some of us will be live tweeting and, and such, and, uh, and, and and involved in it. I think, uh, Amen. If you'll have me, if we can get the schedule right, um, <laughs> that will. <laughs> What's going on here? Hey, man. Finally, you two crazy kids are getting together. Hey, man. I, I'm thinking. going to make you knit a sweater. I'm thinking of stopping like by. A, th- a thousand people who have been writing fanfics about you. <laughs> <laughs> Their brains just exploded. Yes. We see him. Yes. We OTP. See him. OTP. Have him. Have him. <laughs> Waiting for that. Oh, stop sending me your Wrestling Mayhem Show fanfics, please. <laughs> no, continue to send them. <laughs> care I of. want to read the Wrestling Mayhem care, Show. Fanfics. Care of DJ Lunchbox. Wait, I had a question here. What, uh, no, I'm thinking of stopping by the Midweek War um, to help you out uh, on, on, okay. on, on NXT if we if we can work it out. I don't know. I may have a conflicting podcast that night, to be honest. <laughs> so I don't know if, if I don't get a confirmation. So. I know. I don't even know what the podcast is about, but apparently I'm supposed to be on one, so I don't know. Um, we'll see. We'll see what's going on. I need to find that email. Uh, but no, hey, let's uh, take a moment. Let's take a step back. Let's simmer down. Simmer down, guys. And uh, I'll talk about our friends at IndieWrestling.com. It's uh, where you can pick up a whole bunch of cool stuff if you're, uh, hey, if you're a big Ring of Honor fan, you're a Dalton Castle fan. We had the Dalton Castle here in Pittsburgh long before the Ring of Honors did. Long before uh, when he was the party peacock. You can get volume one and two of Rise of the Peacock. No, no, no. That's the other show right there. Right there. Uh, Rise of the Peacock. uh, The best of him in uh, IWC is our heavyweight champion. Um, A really awesome collection. Um, him taking on guys like Colt Cabana, Sammy Callahan, the now, the current Solomon Crow, of course, uh, a whole bunch of other okay, guys, John times. McChesney, da- Matt Tav- Tavern, Tavern, no, Ta- Matt Ta- Matt Taven, that's the word Matt I'm Taven. looking for. Woo, Matt woo! Taven. I need to drink another one of these not sponsored Kickstarters. Uh, and so much more. It's such a, a, a great collection there. Uh, so go please check out Colin Delaney, a part of that too, the extremely cute wrestler. Um, no, that's his tagline. I'm not making another pass like I did at Heyman earlier. Uh, so go check that out. So much more. And the great column, you want to catch up, what is fit to be checking out in the indies? Uh, go hit up the blog and check out Around the Indies with Matt Carlins, um, which has been a, a, an uncertified hit as far as uh, things uh, being uh, plugged over there on IndiaWrestling.us. Uh, great visual tour 
through social media and pictures of what's happened over the weekend. You get a good you get a you get a good state of what's going on, and it's better than picking up that PWI rag at the newsstand at the Walmart. Notice that it's on Walmart now in, in, in the checkout rag. line. It's right next to to Kim Kardashian's fat ass, okay? And uh, you don't have to hey, get that. Just go to IndieWrestling.us slash blog, check out Around the Indies, and then you too can be the smart guy around your wrestling friends, just like Eamon, and you're the one that gets tweeted, who is that person that I don't know on Raw? Right, Eamon? Right, Sork. Back to yes, me. Yes, indeed. <laughs> so from the highs to apparently those guys I've been trying to find because I I really I like our wrestling man show to be fair and balanced. Okay? Fair oh, oh. and balanced. Wait. You know that doesn't mean fair and balanced, right? Shit. Hashtag Fox News. <laughs> <laughs> we don't get political up here. That's right. This hipster knew Don Dar- 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 Castle before he was cool. Uh we actually got an interview. <laughs> with him um important it's a i'm promoting an important midweek war this week did i already do that i take it there's something else going on sure i don't know i don't know uh then you don't have to ask Eamon who the rosebuds are that's a good point too uh so so uh this past weekend was tna's pay-per-view uh, Bound for Gloria, they're they're really their WrestleMania of the year for the most part, right? Uh, we have yeah. feedback from Mad Mike and Eamon. You watched it as well to kind of give us an idea of what's happening over there. Shall I start with Mad Mike's um, email? And, and I'm sure that's. And I want to qualify again. I'm don't. We're trying not to be on the TNA hate bashing train. But these are their thoughts, and he has a lot of thoughts. Um, well, he he started the Mad Mac mail uh, titling it "Bound for Disappointment." Uh, Garza, I think you are the resident uh, TNA defender, if I recall. Uh, please, please get, and we should actually have a we have Garza on, right? Because wait, is he? Wait, I'm trying to remember. Is Garza the defender of TNA? <laughs> yes, like, he is, but he actually okay. didn't like this show either. Apparently, so. wow. Oh, can somebody invite him? Can we have, uh, uh, we'll give him a spot? Can somebody invite Garza? And in? if he's if he's able, okay. I actually would like to hear his thoughts, especially then. Um, so, but uh, oh, first, I would too. some Eamon, Bobby, if either of you could engineer that. Um, okay, but Mad Mike. In the meantime, before I start this email, I want to formally apologize to Eamon for just suggesting we watch Pound for Glory. <laughs> there you go, Eamon. Um, but. Uh, going into it uh my bad sir your eyes were too young to witness that uh now without further ado uh greetings may emers for it's the guy that mocks uh sunny for being kind of hoary but she's still way more over than bound for glory it's mad motherfucking night mike uh so when the best surprise your pay-per-view has to offer is brodus clay becoming the number one contender and the biggest pods belong to al snow and tommy dreamer how would you say the state of your company is Uh, this certainly did feel like the last pay-per-view of a company though all the people in charge tried uh to get on camera once we saw all the road agents including gregory helms who came out literally just to compare heights to take take Tigre Uno. Tigre Tigre Uno. Thank you. Uh, We got John Gabrick taking a big pratfall. And yes, Al Snow was in a number one contender match. Hmm. The wrestling was fine, but as we all know, that is never the issue with TNA. This didn't even feel like a pay-per-view, let alone their WrestleMania. But with Matt Hardy as the champion, this makes Drew Galloway look like the biggest idiot ever. And it didn't put Hardy over because... Faces shouldn't need a biased referee. To illustrate the point further, the video package for the last match cut out the audio and they had to literally just stop the package with Josh and Pope doing simultaneous shrug faces. <laughs> really? <laughs> that happened? Did that seriously no, happen that like happened. that? Oh, jeez. Um, but uh, as I make a switch, uh, now a question for you guys. With EC3 putting in an injunction on the Hardys for showing up on Impact, is there a point of watching Impact until we get new tapings? I ask because the New York City... I'm sorry, New York Comic Con this weekend. Be sure to shot me if you see me. I need to prioritize what I watch on my TV catch up, and Impact and ROH are literally the bottom of the list. I plan on watching reruns of Doug before I watch those shows. Ending transmission. Um, well, well, first, before God, we. Keep in mind, there have been developments since that email has been sent. Right, right. Um, uh, 
because uh, for those that don't know, Matt Hardy won the championship in the main event sure. in the triple threat match sure, because Jeff Hardy not? was the referee. That's what you want. Yeah, because Jeff Hardy was the referee and intentionally attacked EC3. And yeah, uh, pretty much everything was on Matt Hardy's side. Uh, so Ethan Carter uh, filed an injunction against his his Aunt Dixie and the company injunction, uh, injunction. saying that he... Saying that he was unfairly, you know, the stack was un- the deck was unfairly stacked against him, which it could be argued, yeah, it probably was. Uh, and then, to, as of today, Matt Hardy released a video saying, uh, "So the injunction says that uh, I can't appear on Impact, you know, because I'm the champion, and and it, the injunction forces me to not appear on Impact. So I'm just going to give up the belt." That just tells me TNA has no clue what they're doing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like, well, he won last night, but don't, nope, he's given up the title because we have no idea what we're doing. Mm-hmm. He wasn't even that conflicted in giving up the yeah. title. He's just like, you know what, guys? I, um, I made a decision. I'm going to give back the championship. <laughs> it's cool. I'll win it again because let's be honest here. I'm Matt Hardy. just sit through a three-hour show. To see you triumphantly win that, the title that, that was supposed to be a cost big deal. Were, that cost so upwards you give the, it up two days later. That that cost upwards the fifty dollars to legitimately see. So mm. Mm, that's a that's a pricey movie ticket. Uh so uh we have on the line Antonio Garza. He's from the wrestling revolution dot com. He's been he's been reviewing some indies lately with RWA and IWC. Thank you for that. Uh so so okay. You are typically, I believe, our TNA <laughs> defender, um, but I, I think you're also the one likes Data Brooke, if I'm remembering my midweek war uh, yes. history. So with that in mind, people of the internet, what were your thoughts on Bound for Glory? Uh, j- just quickly to address Bobby's, uh, they don't know what they're doing. I think they do know what they're doing. They just don't have a show to do it. <laughs> and that's why they're doing this Spain. <laughs> okay. Uh Bound for Glory. Uh, aside from the Battle Royale, where Mal Hardy or Malaburi Shira made everyone dance, I think the whole show was good. The wrestling was good. The the wrestling was good, man. You know it. You know <laughs> I, I, I would say the wrestling was completely uninspired. <laughs> no, no, the wrestling was good. Right. The wrestling has never been an issue for TNA. Uh, the only, I guess, the only bad wrestling could have been the Austin Kong match because Austin Kong cannot take a single bump. So How that dare was. How dare you? I'm sorry. Yeah. That, <laughs> how that, dare you? That, that was a. Uh, that was how they say that Yellow Kim was uh, wrestling with a broomstick <laughs> because uh, Austin Kong, I, I think, is a way to I, injure it right now. I was gonna say if it tells you anything, Lunchbox, they spent the match instead of like. Just having a competitive match, teasing an Awesome Kong Robert Irvine uh, matchup. I don't even know who that is. I don't care. Go That's, ahead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's Robert Dude, Irvine. It's impossible. Robert Irvine's a former Food Network star. What? Which is like there, Get which wait, there. wait, wait. Is he that tall, lanky guy from Restaurant Impossible? Yep. Yes. The, Kitchen, the, one, yeah, 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 the one who's, 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 legitimately, married, who's legitimately married to Gail Kemp. He's the host double there. I can't handle this. <laughs> yes. Go on. Go on. That's, the, that's, that's their response for like their big celebrity get. It's like someone that's now on like the cooking channel, barely. God. <laughs> barely. <laughs> He's like hanging on to the cooking channel. Well, it, it wasn't to promote him. It was just to, like to bring in the, the Gail Kane husband thing. Because, of course. <laughs> He's been part of the storyline with Taren Terrell this whole time. Yeah, yeah, and that had an ending. Well, we'll see you next week. We'll see you tomorrow. (laughs) They should have had somebody that represented Destination America. They should have had Bigfoot. (laughs) Wait, he wasn't in the crowd anymore? (laughs) He was, but he's blurry. Oh, okay. But I don't know how... Okay, I would say the tag title match was pretty good. And I would say the uh, Ultimate X match, if you like that kind of style, is pretty good. Other than that, I can't tell. I can't honestly say those matches were good matches. The, the three way was pretty good. I don't even remember the three way. The oh, but, no, it was not. Yeah, no, it was, it was good. not. It was good. My favorite. They part had of, no psychology. My favorite part is when they tied Jennifer Tilly up. 
What? I completely missed okay. that segment. <laughs> oh, that was, no, no, no. that was a different bound. <laughs> no, the man had no psychology. Uh, Kurt Angle got to beat Eric Young or whatever in a match that nobody cared about. Like, I... <laughs> He, he was bad. It, this is also the second pay per view in a row where TNA has had technical problems that have like abruptly called to cause things to like like turn off the rails. Like, what is happening? Like, and I don't understand how people can conceivably pay fifty dollars for that show. Sorry. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It, it, it is hard, especially when um, it's really kind of down to a value proposition at this point, isn't it? It's like, well, I can watch this wrestling for fifty dollars every few months, or I can go pay nine ninety nine here for the Apple computer. It's like if the iPhone became fifty dollars. Why would yeah, you buy anything fair. else? It's not fair to like, like you have to look at it in the sense of how wrestling is now. Like, right. there's so many much. Mud- much better alternatives out there for much cheaper. Like there's no excuse. But to be like, also to be fair, we 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 also kind of have expected that TNA is kind of just honoring contracts to pay per view providers at this point. And you know, as we're kind of seeing by the one night stands and and the is wait one night stand one night only uh, pay per views that aren't even live. They're just a whatever show. Uh, and and that they've cut down their live pay per views to so few of them and convert them to the live show or the regular show or something like that. I mean, they're they know they need to the transition away, and I don't know. I feel like they're limping, uh, figuring out what that next version of that transition is. Um, so I, I think just a lot of stuff caught them out of left field, or maybe they're just not seeing the writing on the wall, or they are seeing the writing on the wall and they're kind of spinning things down for Global Force Wrestling to buy them. I don't know, uh, but. It, it's it's weird it, it, and, and and i don't know and maybe that is the way it is maybe it isn't i don't know um t- 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 <laughs> yeah <laughs> I'm, I'm trying i'm trying to be i'm trying to figure the positive spin on this thing right um and not seeing the pay-per-view but again just just with so much um kind of response like that and uh i i, I don't know I'm, I'm sorry but just to sit through a three-hour show like that and, and and especially with the ending, like just absolutely, like I I, I told I was like I felt bad watching the show. Like I, I I was like, why did I do this? And especially with the stuff that came out today, it's like, okay, really, why did I do this? Like there's I, the the whole world title thing was so left a bad taste in my mouth. Especially when the whole logic of the whole scenario was let's throw Matt Hardy in there because we're in North Carolina. And then, like everyone in the crowd had ET three signs, mm-hmm. and Matt. everyone was like, like mm. I don't know. Well, on that point, uh, I, I don't know. I, I, so they do have a couple of shows in the can. Have they even? Um, are, are, they have a taping in, uh, coming up. I, I don't see they. They had a taping. Uh, I think yesterday. Or they did have it yesterday. Two days ago. Okay. Yeah. So, so there are new episodes coming. Um, let's, uh, well, one, okay, let's stay on the TNA, TNA news at least. You know, one side. Uh, uh, apparently, there's news that 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 Dixie uh, accidentally sent a scathing email to Destination America executives. All right, there's there's your first strike. Um, and apparently, um, they uh, their big announcement is that they're going to India for a media tour and talent search. With Sony Six. Now we know th- there was a partnership several years ago where it was a ring kicking, I believe. Is that is that the right pronunciation there? Yeah, I, yes. Was that a direct partnership with TNA? Uh, yeah, it was. I think it was. I think it was. Uh, a lot of guys involved in that. Um, I mean, it wasn't like kind of an on the surface TNA partnership, but I think it was like a lot of their production were going down. I think they were trying to hope to expand in some, some fashion down there. Uh, so that's continuing in some fashion. Uh, but yeah, it, it's a extensive India media tour and talent search. Uh, so not even wrestling shows. So I, I don't know. I, I, I'm guessing this is some sort of just promotion for TNA on India's TV. For, for, for well, what's happening here is that, uh, they're, they're doing, I think, uh, an India tour, like actual wrestling, which may be actual tapings, but I think that that's going to happen on December. So I think uh, Dixie, EC3, 
and I don't know, the other two are just going to to do like a media tour to promote that. Mm-hmm. And they are talking about uh, they're, they're talking about I guess uh, uh, somebody they had on there before when they they did this back in 2014. Uh, oh, their their momentous unveiling of TNA's first ever Indian wrestler. Uh, yeah, that's uh, Mahabali Shira. Okay, how does Shira work and out? He's doing, he's doing something. He's doing he's terrible. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, he's really bad. Yeah, he's terrible, like a terrible wrestler. Oh no! So that worked out. So so it works out as good as tough enough in the diva search. I see. So, um, I don't know. I, it's TNA. It's it's. Uh, again, I want to. Well, Garza, you, like I said, you're usually fairly pro TNA. Other than this, is this going to kind of detract from your watching of the show? Uh, no, not not really. I actually, with the with the Hardy thing, I'm really really interested to see what the hell they're what they're doing. Uh, if they really just have a limited amount of shows before they finally die, I definitely want to see them. Uh, it's going to be part of history. Mm-hmm. Um. Well, there you go, TNA. Well, uh, we'll be right back with the big question. I don't know. It's, I don't know how to address this anymore. And <laughs> no, that's that's the appropriate ending. And I think I'm getting sick, and I I don't know. Um, but I'm not sick of pizza. And our friend Slice on Broadway are helping <laughs> po- Pittsburgh <laughs> podcasting with the perfect pepperoni that is, pizza. That is Genuinely, segue. a good segue. <laughs> I'm trying to do my job, guys, <laughs> and keep it up. I still have two more shows to do tonight. Um, go check out our friend SliceOnBroadway.com. I'm going to take the pizza. I'm going to rub it all over my face, and that's going to make me feel better. No, don't do that, especially not on location with them because somebody's got to clean that up. And we like our friends down at Slice on Broadway, down on the tracks here in Beachview, or Carnegie PA down on Main Street. Um, please uh, check them out. Let them know that you heard about them on the Wrestling Mayhem Show, PGH underscore um, Slice on Twitter, as well as Slice on Broadway on the Facebook and the Instagram. We'll be right back after this look at last week in Sorgatron Media with a little bit of wrestling, a little bit of hobos, a little bit of something for everybody. We'll be right back. Are you familiar with Craigslist? I did know an individual by the name of Craigslist, but uh, he did. It's an online classifieds. You know the classifieds from the newspaper? Oh, I sleep on the newspapers all the time. I know just what you're talking about. Is, uh, hey guys, a happy International Podcast Day. Bye. High five for International who, Podcast Day. Sprained wrist. Who, who, who made it International Podcast Day? Because yesterday was International Coffee Day. Don't and it was like International you. Something Else <laughs> Consumable Day, I thought, too. Yeah, didn't Justin Kanaki list a bunch of days and he left out Podcasting Day, right? Have you force-touched your keyboard? Yes. Force-touching the <laughs> keyboard is the greatest. The you touch your keyboard when you're in a text input field. Ta-da, you have a mouse. <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I had the running joke forever. I mean, when I managed Sterling James Keenan as a heel uh, against Claudio Castagnoli a couple times, and one time we did the uh, the Rick Rude Warrior finish in WrestleMania Five. Uh, you know, if Corey Graves ever needs help beating Cesaro, he knows where to call. Bobby is missing. If you have any information, please contact Captain Planet. Someone wanted Street Fighter Four, include Floyd Money Mayweather and Ronda Rousey. I, I mean, it looks like a, a Street Fighter version of both characters. And I would play as Ronda Rousey all day. Mm-hmm. Let's say you have a friend who is tired and he's burnt out on wrestling, but he doesn't want to give it up. He doesn't want to stop watching wrestling. He wants to get back in. He wants something to hook him, to grab him by the throat like things used to. He's an old man who just wants to love wrestling again. How would you make that old man love wrestling again? Hey guys, they're back to Wrestling Mayhem Show. We're back. You didn't go anywhere. It's the same file. We're on your iPod. We're in your ear holes. Maybe we're on 405 Media Radio. We're all over the place. Uh, or we're on iHeart Radio. Thank you, Bobby, for pointing that out here earlier. Yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, go check out everything uh, from Sawtooth Willie to to Ronda Rousey and Street Fighter 4. Uh, go check that out. And thanks a lot to everybody making some awesome, awesome stuff on the podcasts, on the articles, on the websites, and and so much fun stuff. Oh, 
Oh, I forgot to plug something. I need to I need to re remember to plug this thing on a regular basis. You guys know our friend in the mainstream, Mainstream Matt, does a column over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com, released every Thursday. It's a, his topic of the week, whatever he wants. He tends to get people on the phone, uh, including, do we even talk about, jeez, I feel like I've done a, such a disservice to him. Uh, in, so since he's been around, he's talked to a former head of security for WWE and said that somebody should be fired for all the stuff going on. He talked to the guy that jumped the rail and was in the ring with uh, uh, with the Shield at the last pay per view, and uh, this week he talked with a guy from WWE history and learned about the history of uh, Madison Square Garden in the WWE or WWE in the Madison Square Garden, probably rather, and uh, why exactly have they not been there for so long at televised events? Go check all that stuff out. WrestlingMayhemShow.com and thanks to Mainstream Matt at Mainstream Matt on the Twitters. That's one T at the end of that. Now let's get to the big question. William? What? What? William. Who is this now? <laughs> Codename Sword. Codename LB. 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 Um, so uh, with all this discussion of uh, TNA, um, it got me thinking about their future. We've been talking about um, you know them being basically over and hanging it up and, and being terrible for a very long time. And, and for the longest time, I just assumed, you know, okay, well, once Spike TV or, or, or Destination America or whoever, whenever they drop them, then that's it. Then no more TNA, period. But it occurred to me recently that that might not have to be the end of the promotion. Sure, they wouldn't have TV, um, and it would be a, a problem for them, but they can always just be an indie wrestling promotion. They don't have to be on television. They can just go around the country and, and have their have their shows, or they can just stay in Florida and have their shows and have their local company and just scale way down uh, as a company. So my question uh, to you, my, my big question is – uh, is that possible? Is the brand so tainted that even a local, small, indie-style show would suffer by being associated with TNA? Or um, do you think that they would do well without television? Mm -hmm. Basically, the question is this. Does TNA have a future without television? Doesn't Global Force Wrestling kind of answer the question? Same thing, sir. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, maybe that's a test run. Um, I'm working on my answer. Does anybody have anything uh, ready to roll? Um, uh, Mr. Indie Wrestling, yes. Eamon Payton, the voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling, what do you think? <laughs> there, I think there would still be a promotion. You know, I... It, it, I would, you know, we would say, oh, they're scaled down necessarily, and and yeah, they would, they would lose them. Like I know they've got a good relationship with like UK markets and stuff like that. But like other than that, I don't feel like they like their attendances aren't huge. There, you, you know, I I just feel like they wouldn't lose a lot necessarily. I think if they get canned by Destination America, they're still going to be kicking and screaming and and doing something you know maybe it'll be on the internet maybe it'll be whatever but it'll still be around you know but i think it's at a point, if this happened if you asked me this three years ago i would say no i like like that that would be it but now like they've they've all they've scaled down their production so much to the point where i mean they can do whatever they want i feel okay okay what about you uh Garza, um, I don't. I don't think they would die just because they have uh, funding in the background. So trying to keep alive a Nindy with funding, I think they're gonna do okay. Uh, but they're not ever gonna grow back, or they're not. They they may not really do much more than just being like an indie, like a local indie fed. Uh, but, but like like Edmund said, uh, it is true they do have a, a big contracts all over the world for television. So it, it would be interesting to see how a promotion that doesn't doesn't have TV in the United States will start selling on the other countries. I don't know if that would, they would have to change like their 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 booking or their way to do things to like talk more about non U.S. Uh, events, but. Uh, yeah, I think it would continue. 
Like they would totally be an easy, but uh, they're they're not gonna grow. That and I don't even, I don't even think the name has tainted as much, but I think what uh it's really tainted is knowing who is in the background, like knowing this is there, knowing that well, his name John Gabornik, Gabor something is back there. Like those guys are what are really tainting uh the the promotion. That's what I think. Hmm. Hmm. I, I think um no I I, I you know I, I I think if they're going like the way they're unfortunately any step off of TV is in a lot of people's minds going to be like well that's a step back I mean it's just like when you see uh, uh like anybody that was on TV uh, or or you even I like I remember when people on TNA would pop up at an IWC show like Samoa Joe was at a, an IWC show when he was the hottest thing in TNA, right? And and somebody commenting in the crowd beside me, man, he's really come down if he's here, right? Uh, no, that's just how they work, and they do these other shows t- too, you know. Uh, but for an entire promotion to kind of fall off, you know, TNA was in a really good spot a few years ago on Spike TV in prime time, had pay per views, had guys like Sting and Hogan on paper. They looked great to the outside world that knew about them. There's the other problem, right? Uh, and oh, and now I'm thinking about it. I want to change my answer because my, my initial thing was going to be <laughs> the more I, I look at it, they're coming from their way down. They have a bigger fan base than most indies, and they can ride that and, and turn into some sort of digital thing where they don't need as many people watching them or it can super serve the niche that does like them, like on a YouTube or something something else or a Hulu or something like that. But then I remember that they probably barely drew 200 fans to uh, Pittsburgh PA with Kurt Angle on the card. And, I, and, and, and thinking about that and how they promote and how wrestlers have said people no, don't know we're in town, period, at the hotel across the street. Um, another promotion could do this. Ring of Honor could fall off and do this. Lucha Underground could fall off TV and do this. TNA can't. They're just not functionally capable of it, I don't think. And it's a management down thing. On that note, Bobby? That's what I, that's what I was going to say. Um, yeah, all of that? All of that, including the part where I was conflicted in the middle? <laughs> so I was going to say. Who is going to provide us with our half-empty baseball stadium shows? Um Oh, force I, I know ROH has half full baseball stadium shows, but <laughs> is your ROH? That's I, had to is say. Your... I just had to throw that joke out there. Wow. <laughs> I, Good they, job, Bobby. They, they to, may survive. I want to say. Know. I want to say to be to be fair. Nobody sells out a baseball stadium, even yeah, a minor league. True. It never looks good, but still looks even worse if you got hundred fans out on, there. On, on ROH this week, um, they showed the baseball stadium episode. Um, there was only one patch of seats I saw that was that was empty. So I, they looked pretty good on there. Okay. But there was there was a section that was empty. There was rumors that, that the show was comped heavily. Well, oh, okay. uh, I I don't know. I, I don't know if anybody confirmed that or not. But but when when there was a response, they were to competing something. against NXT that weekend too, though. Mm, in the same area. In the same area. In, yeah. in Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Oh, we're talking about yeah. Brooklyn. Oh, oh okay. same night. Oh, that's right. That's right. I'm sorry. I, yeah. I, I flipped. Um, but was that your answer? Was, do you have anything else on that? Yeah. No, I don't know what TNA is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, L- LB, do you have any any additional thoughts on your own question after this I round? Think, I think that it's uh, it's entirely possible I, I, for TNA to just become this tiny little promotion and and to build up a really hardcore fan base. Uh, I, I don't think that they could be removed from TV, go that route, and return to TV in the States. Um, I think they would always be that, that company of, oh, remember when we used to? Oh, yeah. Um, but... Um, but yeah, I think they could have a very nice little life, uh, a nice little second life as a as a humble indie promotion. You know, you know, I have a good example because you know who fell off TV and still exists as an independent promotion of sorts, mm. the NWA. They come out with a movie. No, no Bobby, Bobby, <laughs> Damn it, Bobby. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> I can't even follow that up. Okay. Um, okay. Um, 
Uh, LB, LB, we had we had a question last week where we were trying to help you uh, yeah. cure you of your burnout, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. and 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 there was a lot of answers kind of thrown at you. I think some people did comment uh, throughout the week on this. I, I'll see if I can gather up here real quick uh, if, if there's any extra ones for me to throw in the fire. Uh, but but. Uh, and you mentioned you alluded to something about a new strategy earlier. Can you can you elaborate on that? Uh, well, uh, I mean, some of the answers made a lot of sense to me. Um, and one of them was like, you know, remember what you like about wrestling, and and don't don't just watch Raw all the time because you know you know you're going to get burned by that. And, that, and that, those things make a lot of sense to me. So, and I know that I like NXT. I love what they're doing there, and that's a good place to start as any. So uh, uh, with this uh, with this new NXT pay per view, so so starts a new uh, a new journey for me uh, of watching professional wrestling. I'm gonna I'm gonna watch that. Um, I know uh, I am I was woefully behind on um, Lucha Underground. Uh, I'm gonna watch. Uh, I know I know I want to catch up on Lucha Underground because what I saw I greatly enjoyed. Um, so, uh, there's that. And, uh, I know there's a lot of, um, a lot of the, the Japanese pay reviews that I missed as well, that everybody was absolutely bonkers about. So I'm going to, I'm going to watch them. That's, that's going to be, um, where I, uh, where I start out and, uh, we'll see, we'll see what happens from there. Um, I am willing to adjust this, uh, this plan, uh, if there are any super good ideas from people who answered, uh, in the emails. Also attend local indie shows. That might be a step down the line. Uh, LB? Yes. Uh, I have a vast collection of Pro Wrestling Guerrilla DVDs, Ooh. and I am willing to take trade. I mean, Ooh. take trade. Bring Let's back go back to school. school. Yeah, Let's bring it back to the school. Yeah. I have right. to find my VCR first. Wait, what do you, wait, <laughs> you, wait, you have <laughs> tapes? Like tape tapes? No, I have DVDs, but... It sounds better. <laughs> so like, hey, right, right. I want to give you. I mean, just because these are probably like indie indie things, and they're probably like nobody would mind so much because they're probably older stuff. Handbrake, handbrake's a good program. <laughs> we can have a. Uh, t- okay, I'm I'm giving too much information away. You tried um, to give out the diary of Anne Frank of wrestling tonight. What? <laughs> Wait, wow. what? World class championship wrestling. <laughs> Oh compared it to the diary of Anne Frank. It kind of is, isn't it? I mean, I mean, it's no Holocaust, but I mean, a lot of bad stuff happened. <laughs> oh, whoa. All right. All right. Nope. Nope. No. Uh-uh. Let's, uh, let's redirect. Guys, uh, I think I will, uh, I, will, I will be in touch, sir. Yes, let's get in contact. <laughs> Tape trading. Yeah. Tape trading. Yeah. yeah. But no, let, let, let us know uh, what you think about that. And uh, and yeah. So there. So do we get do we get any comments on it? I if if there are, I missed them. Um <laughs> just, I, I, I I lost them. I, I I I'm sorry, I lost them. Um no, I don't think I don't think there were for, for this part of it actually. I know so. we didn't we didn't get any emails. Email us. Hey, if you if you sent us a comment and uh it was lost in the shuffle somehow, email us good times at wrestling mayhem show dot com because mm-hmm. I am willing to try almost okay. at this point. So so I mean with that, I mean I I think I kind of have to expand on that a little bit. Uh, it, I think it's a good time for experimentation. <laughs> I think we're definitely in a little bit of a readjustment, but between that and seeing just the insanity, somebody just sent me um, the, the packaging for Battle of Los Angeles for PWG, um, and it looks better than a WWE DVD, to be quite honest. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I oh, mean... Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think, again, you know, it is the wrong show, but um, we don't explore this. But really, I think that indie wrestling kind of side of things, uh, now more than ever, there are so many companies with so many great ideas, other than the fact that they have like 200 fans in the building. I don't know how many people are at PWG. I mean, it doesn't look like a lot of people, right? The, the building is, is for 300, by the, uh, they packed it up like to 500. Okay, but you, you're like, that's yeah. not. A lot of people and Ring of Honor does not. I mean, you know, six hundred to a thousand. I've seen at a show for Ring of Honor. Gara alone counts as a thousand people. That, that, that's true too. That, that's, that's, that's a, there's a lot going on there. Um, but um, 
But I think I think they are finding like some really big life as far as you know being on a, a smart mark video and everything like that. I I think I think that. I think that keeps a lot of people alive, you know. I jeez, just talking to somebody today, like, yeah, I've watched WWE since two thousand five, and there's a lot of that. But you know, Garza, Eamon, uh, I mean, your guys there really kind of diving in stuff. Bobby, you're getting an IWC here locally. I mean, mm-hmm. is do you think generally is that an advisable kind of thing to keep you in there to keep things fresh? You know, yeah. should you see other wrestling promotions? Wrestling yeah, is- definitely. So. Yes. Wrestling is fun live. And again, wrestling is fun live, and it's not quite as expensive as a WWE ticket, uh, usually for a whole lot closer. It's a different experience. So Which the price just price just went up for WWE tickets, didn't it? it did it? What, what did, didn't I read that? I think, I think, it, I think it, I, it at Disney World. Oh, Disney World. Was, uh, you sure it wasn't? <laughs> no, I, thought I, I thought I read that somewhere that um, that they were raising their ticket prices. Like in general or for just like WrestleMania? In general. Like I thought like – I can't remember exactly what the percentage was, but the ticket prices across the board were going to go up. So, so in in an age where WWE has is hitting potentially record low for the last like fifteen years uh, attendance, they're going to raise the prices. Mm-hmm. That really helps out. So. Ladies and gentlemen, Vince McMahon. Vince, uh, ladies and gentlemen, stockholders. I mean, these are not. And the thing is, I think you would do as a wrestling promotion. I'm sorry. I, I'm having a headphone problem I'm trying to fix over here. So bear with me. I can't hear anybody right now. Um, so somebody with a good point, go. <laughs> well, it's not, it's, not, it's not all uh, bad. I mean, NXT is selling out every single arena it, uh, it goes near. So, you know, there's some, uh, there's some merit in the idea, I think. Have I talked about on here the idea that more people are watching the WWE pay-per-views than they ever have before? Which it is no, an article like from that. like a month ago. What's mm-hmm. that? I said no, but I like that uh, because of WWE Network, because of everything. Uh, I think WrestleMania for the first time beat a million views or a mil- oh. million viewers uh, last year. Not not this past year. I believe the year before, the first year that they were even on WWE <laughs> Network. So again, we uh, we talked a little bit earlier about that value proposition. That's that's it. You know, you're getting more eyeballs. You're getting more people invested in the product even then even if the product is an alternative product you created yourself internally <laughs> like nxt you got people invested even if they're not still excited and buying john cena t-shirts now they're going and buying kevin owens shirts which now becomes the next john cena potentially right or they're buying uh uh finn Balor shirts you know they're buying tickets and selling out these small venues here in in pittsburgh and san antonio right uh and and um um what, san jose i think it was uh you know i mean that's that's it's another revenue stream and you know and, and it's just like something to add on top of everything so like well we're going down here and here but we added all this stuff from nxt and guess what we're not paying them a whole lot because they're all developmental guys <laughs> <laughs> because i don't know if you guys heard that apparently everybody down there uh they they do get merchandising so your finn balor shirt does help finn balor but everybody else is still under their developmental contract which i think is 30 30 000 a year if i'm i think i saw that number um the only the only good thing is they are they are actually um whenever they do travel like the texas tour like going to England going to paper, uh, doing the pay per views and take over in Brooklyn. They are covering their travel, so at least that's not that's a nice. bigger that's hit. Good. That's because nice of them. I mean, if you're only making, uh, even if it's not thirty, they're making less than fifty probably. Because I think the lower tier talent on WWE main roster is doing eighty. So, uh, you know, I mean, that's, that's that's a big hit if you have to do your travel as well. So, but yeah, I was gonna say because the the lower tier of the main roster didn't used to get a travel expense covered. They it did? was only a top card. Right, right. So which even like you, you see those situations of Total Divas, they're not making a whole lot. So um but anyways. On that note, uh if there's nothing else to discuss, anything else happened in wrestling this week that I'm missing perhaps before we move on to what we learned? I think that's about it. We got our NXT Raw, we talked about it on the Raw wrap up. Uh, uh, we'll talk extensively, I'm sure, about uh, everything leading into Hell in a Cell next week. General po- general opinion. Maybe I'll just take a quick poll here. Who really enjoyed Raw last night? I like the end of it Raw. 
It very, was awesome. Very they, old school. I was sleepy and it woke me up. There you go. There you go. The 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 the, the wake Bobby up factor, right? Yeah. So. New day. It's a new day. Oh, that's that's true new too. I, I had to fight off because everybody wanted to talk about New Day again this week as a, as a full segment, and I'm like, uh, you know, we talked about New Day like significantly in the last two weeks. But yes, they are kind of the best thing happening on the WWE right now. <laughs> so I mean, you really can't deny that, and I love that they're just getting that rub that they are like we're the bad guys standing tall at the end of Raw. Amazing, <laughs> absolutely amazing. Uh, guys, let me know what did you learn from wrestling. This week, Amen. Oh God, no! <laughs> um, I was totally going to be first. Uh, I learned from wrestling this week that um, uh, TNA and maybe <laughs> that's the thing I learned. And that's that. Yeah. And that's <laughs> that. You know. All right, uh, um, Bobby. I learned that Braun Strowman enjoys white cheddar popcorn and cotton candy hot dogs. <laughs> okay, uh, <Wow. laughs> Braun Strowman. Yeah. Uh, what about you, LB? Um, uh, <laughs> should I? <laughs> I was trying to make sense of cotton candy hot dogs, and I lost it. <laughs> the, 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 at the Texas Ranger games, they're selling cotton candy hot dogs, and, and in the hangout last night, we were going, I'm Braun Strowman. I like can't, cotton candy hot dogs. <laughs> yeah. Um, I learned uh, I learned that um, – uh, <laughs> Garza, what did you um, learn? What'd you learn, Garza? Uh, I learned uh, th- there was a pay per view, a Triple A pay per view in Mexico this weekend, and I think we I just saw the the first developments of Lucha Underground season two because there was a guy called Taurus that they viewed. Like, he's like something between Mantar and Torito, mm-hmm. and I'm pretty sure he's gonna be connected to Dario Cueto's like fetish with with bulls. Is that why he went back to get the bull? Yeah, I think so. Oh. Spoiler alert. <laughs> there you go. LB, you got something? Uh, I learned that um, it doesn't matter how bad a pay-per-view is. If Awesome Kong is on it, I will at least maybe think about watching it. <laughs> well, there you go. Sometimes that still won't pull through. Uh, Not so every time, no. From the chat, uh, Garza, thank you for sharing that. And, of course, uh, Gabriel out there says, I love New Day. It was uh, it was nice to see them dominate like they did on Raw. And Charmin learned uh, Natalia Neidhart can win a match clean on TV in 2015. That was good. I love this naughty mini. Party. I love this. The naughty potty, not the thing naughty that you put party. up through your nose. That's what I learned from, from the Raw wrap-up last night. Um, oh, what shit. Did what did I learn? What did I learn in wrestling this week? Sorg, what did you learn in wrestling? What? I love, um, I love uh, uh, Live from MSG, or as I like to call it, uh, Saturday Night's Main Event from MSG. Uh, it was a lot of fun. It was, uh, it, you know, it, it was a nice show that uh, had a lot going on, a lot of great wrestling, and it didn't feel as heavy as like a Raw would or have the shit needs to happen like a pay-per-view does. Uh, no pyro. What's that? No pyro. I Yeah, I love it. It's, it's, I love this like toned down version of it. Like, let's just get to the wrestling. The theatrics were just lessened. We had lighting effects and that was it. We didn't even get the pyro for Kane. Or Jericho. Or Jericho, anything, even the Dudleys. Like I, it's just kind of sad because it was just like, and then there was nothing. <laughs> like I kind of wish instead of them doing like main event superstars before the other shows, they would maybe just tape a night like over the weekend, like Sunday night. That's where you do your main event, you do your superstars, and do it like the MSG show maybe. Like like just make it the lower show. Like it was kind of nice to have the context of here's Monday Nitro and Thunder, where we did all the pyro, and we did all this stuff, and, and it's crazy. And then we had, hey, here's the studio wrestling with Main Event and uh, WCW Worldwide, right? Uh, and and they felt like wrestling. and they felt like completely different things. Or was that primetime wrestling? Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Like, like, I feel like 
there's an advantage to go back to that. Or maybe we get a weekly extra wrestling show on WWE Network, you know, because we need more in-ring stuff, I guess. Or maybe that's what a secondary NXT show. Since NXT is so big, can we just like throw cameras in some of those armories that they're film they're 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 having shows in in Florida? They've been doing that. Uh, yeah, they have, but like put enough cameras in there that you can like produce a small version of the show and just like run that on Saturday morning. Like it can be NXT superstars for all I care. Or NXT kids. Like NXT, the NXT wrestling video. challenge. <laughs> you know? Uh like let's like okay, let's see the raw talent. Like let's see the super raw talent. Let's see the um because you don't see a lot of uh, anymore it feels um well yeah we saw adam rose but we saw his two gimmicks beforehand remember um mm-hmm. i think there's a lot more pressure on them to show something ready on nxt now <laughs> um but it's interesting <laughs> guys thank you so much for joining us thank you so much in the chat room hot wheels rwa has been joining us uh matt carlins has been joining us in there somebody named melody i don't know if that's a real person or not and uh garza <laughs> garza we drug you kicking and screaming into the show thank you for joining us uh, we're calling an audible there. Thank you so much, everybody joining us. Drop us a line, 412-206-WMS0, uh, or goodtimesatwrestlingmamshow.com, <laughs> or uh, subscribe <laughs> to the show, <laughs> wrestlingmamshow.com. And, uh, and, of course, join us at live.wrestlingmamshow.com every Tuesday about 9 p.m. Eastern time. We roll straight through to midnight. Woo! Oh, yeah. Uh, so so please join us. Check us out and become part of the community. Follow us on the social media. Subscribe. I want your comments. I want your comments. This is on the line. At least five of you need to respond no. for this to be on the line for World Class Championship Wrestling. No comment. <laughs> no comment. That got weird tonight. Things that will not be the title of this show. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much. At Aim and Two, please, the voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling. That may be frozen on the internet. That will be awkward because he's my co host later. Yes, Bobby F. <laughs> no, you're not Bobby F. <laughs> what? <laughs> delayed reaction. Oh, this is going to be amazing. Yeah, I'm very delayed. Sorry. Antonio Garza of the WrestlingRevolution.com. He's giving a peace sign for you, audio people. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I forget. <laughs> and of course, uh Papa Lunchbox, DJ Lunchbox, Sawtooth Willie on the Facebooks and the YouTubes, panelriot.com, the power hour at sorgatron.com. It's else? true, that's all. Oh, I, I, I was hoping you fill in on the thing that I forgot. Nope, those are all of my projects that are uh uh, ready to promote and soon to be the host of uh pop a lunchbox power slam jam late nights on pc tv public access coming up here in december 2016 that's right folks remember it's the power and if you can't slam it you can jam it thank you so much everybody for joining us becoming part of this mayhem family and we're almost at the 10 year mark We'll see you guys next time. Mayhem out. Just wait. Just wait. Thanks for outroing me, Sorg. Oh, shit! <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have anything to plug or anything like that, and that's fine. <laughs> that's that's fine. what happens when I put an extra person in. Plug Insert Coin, man! Insert Coin to begin is a website in which we talk about video games and such. Mayhem out! I'm using it! <laughs> This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.